The idea of removing a man from the cockpit of a combat aircraft arose even before the advent of the jet era. Military aviators appreciated the great potential of radio control. From the beginning in the 30s of the 20th century, remotely controlled targets began to be made from existing aircraft and fired at them during exercises. Then came the projectile aircraft, the prototype of cruise missiles in the future. Soon, the world's first attack drone was called Interstate DDR-1 and was intended to destroy ships using aircraft bombs and torpedoes. The United States Navy ordered 200 of these aircraft and used them in the fall of 1944 to attack the Japanese fleet. Even in our modern understanding, it was a full-fledged combat unmanned aerial vehicle. In real time, it was controlled by an operator who was sitting in the escort plane. Targeting was carried out according to the picture broadcast from the onboard television camera, according to some information, the operator could confidently control the drone at a distance of up to two to three tens of kilometers. The combat use of DDR-1 drones can only be called successful with a very big stretch, since they were mainly used as projectile aircraft. It was difficult to use weapons on target due to the low resolution of the camera, on the other hand, the loss of a relatively cheap unmanned aircraft was incomparable with the huge damage that a 900 kg torpedo inflicted. From the end of World War II and until the beginning of the 21st century, military unmanned aircraft developed mainly for reconnaissance tasks, and only in the last two decades in some countries began active work on the creation of strike drones and, as a rule, they were built on the basis of already existing reconnaissance drones. The American multipurpose MQ-1 Predator is the most illustrative example, as well as the General Atomics Reaper based on it, a technically more advanced and massive unmanned aircraft, but at the same time much more expensive. Attack drones of this class have shown themselves quite successfully in the recent armed conflicts, and all the leading aviation powers of the world have begun developing much heavier unmanned aerial vehicles for the same purpose. To fly further, faster and take on board more payload, they had to come close to modern multi-role fighters in terms of takeoff weight. It is noteworthy that just in our time, research is being actively carried out on drawing up the appearance and requirements for the future sixth generation of fighters, many experts believe that these combat vehicles will be optional or completely unmanned. The experience gained in the creation and operation of heavy attack drones can be extremely in demand for promising fighters of the future. Work on the topic of unmanned aircraft of a large mass is being actively carried out in countries with a developed military aviation industry. These are the United States, some states of Europe, China, and Russia. To date, there are a dozen different projects, some of them have already been completed, about some very little is known, and the rest are in the process of development. Solving essentially the same problem, aircraft designers from different countries, without collusion, chose the same aerodynamic scheme for their unmanned aircraft. The Angels of the Sky Channel is with you, we are revealing the topic of unmanned aerial vehicles made according to the flying wing scheme. At the beginning of February 2011, the first flight of the unmanned aircraft X-47B took place. The American firm Northrop Grumman produced two prototypes and over the next several years conducted an extensive flight test program. The attention of the aviation community to this project was riveted for several reasons. At the beginning of the 2000s, the US Navy and Air Force already held a competition called JUCAS to create an unmanned multifunctional aircraft. Flight tests were attended by two contestants, Boeing with the X-45 prototype and the Northrop Grumman drone designated X-47. The potential combat capabilities of these relatively small machines did not seem to the military enough, and both firms began work on heavier counterparts, then the paths of former competitors diverged. Boeing created a 15-ton Phantom Ray drone without participating in any program and raised it for the first time in Sky in April 2011. Since then, almost nothing is known about the specific achievements of this project. The company Northrop Grumman went the other way, becoming the only participant in the UCAS-D program to create a multi-purpose unmanned aircraft demonstrator for the benefit of the naval forces. The uniqueness of the project was that the 20-ton vehicle had to land and take off from the deck of an aircraft carrier in automatic mode. The American sailors wanted to find out how well the unmanned aircraft would fit into the already well-functioning infrastructure of the aircraft carrier group and how much it would be in demand for solving tactical tasks, conducting reconnaissance and alive. 
Northrop Grumman introduced the unmanned aircraft in 2009 under the designation X-47B, believed to be a modification of the base model X-47A that was created for the previous competition. The scale of changes and improvements indicated that this was almost a completely new aircraft, for example, in comparison with its predecessor, the maximum takeoff weight increased 7.5 times and amounted to slightly more than 20 tons. Its increase by almost an order of magnitude required the installation of an engine with a much higher thrust. The Pratt & Whitney company developed a special modification of the F-100 bypass turbojet engine which was installed on the American F-15 and F-16 fighters, the main difference was the absence of an afterburner, for an unmanned aircraft of this class it is absolutely unnecessary, the maximum thrust of 7.5 tons was quite enough for a 20-ton machine. Due to the main requirement of the project, the possibility of basing on the aircraft carrier X-47B acquired design features characteristic of carrier-based aircraft. The wing with a span of 19 meters had folding consoles allowing for taxiing in a limited space on the ship, in the raised position the overall width of the aircraft was halved. The landing gear legs were reinforced to dampen the high vertical speed when landing on the deck. A brake hook appeared in the tail section of the airframe to grip the air arrestor cable. The aerodynamic design on which the X-47B was built deserves special mention and disclosure. The world practice of creating multi-purpose unmanned aerial vehicles of medium and large mass shows that almost all such aircraft were built according to the flying wing scheme. From the USA, we can note the Boeing company this X-45 and its development Phantom Ray as well as the Northrop Grumman with X-47 vehicles in both versions. In Western Europe, work is underway on the Neuron project, where the main contractor is the French company Dassault Aviation, companies from five countries participate in international cooperation. In the United Kingdom, BAE Systems is independently developing the Tirana unmanned aircraft. China is working on the Li Jian project and, according to some reports, four ready-made copies are already undergoing experimental military tests. In Russia, the Sukhoi Design Bureau has built one prototype of the S-70 Hunter heavy unmanned aircraft, which has been flying since 2019. The flying wing scheme for all of the above projects was chosen due to the combination of several decisive advantages, in comparison with the classical normal scheme. The flying wing has a higher aerodynamic quality. This is facilitated by a good lift to drag ratio. The advantages of a flying wing in aerodynamic perfection are realized in practice in the following. To maintain cruising speed, such an aircraft requires less engine power, and the fuel saved in this case increases the flight range. Moreover, the kerosene itself or other payload on board the flying wing is greater due to the reduced specific weight of the airframe. Along with good aerodynamics, another major advantage for a combat aircraft is its low visibility, both radar and thermal. For a strike unmanned vehicle, in fact, this is the main factor of survival and tasks related to overcoming air defense. The flying wing is the most suitable scheme for implementing measures to reduce the range and probability of detection. The glider of such an aircraft from almost all angles has a low radio reflective ability, it has no external suspension and all weapons are hidden in the internal cargo compartments. The blades of the first stages of the engine compressor are covered with a curved air intake channel, it is necessary to exclude their line of sight because they are the strongest reflector of radio waves when irradiated from the front. To reduce the visibility in the thermal range, a flat engine nozzle is installed. The jet of exhaust gas is formed by it gives off its heat to the atmosphere much faster. In addition to a set of advantages, the flying wing has a number of disadvantages, the most significant of which are control problems and low maneuverability, due to the fact that the control aerodynamic surfaces have low efficiency due to the relatively close location to the center of mass. But for unmanned strike aircraft, high maneuverability is not required, and high flight speeds are not expected from them. All such aircraft are subsonic and the large sweep of the wing should not be misleading, they need it to give greater directional stability, and not for flights at supersonic speed. The wing profiles of large relative thickness, optimized for flight at cruising subsonic speed, also do not allow flying fast. 
Talk about supersonic for drones of this class was actively pursued at the time of the appearance of a photograph of the Chinese Li Jian in 2013 and the Russian S-70 Hunter in 2019. Engines with an afterburner borrowed from fighters were installed on both devices. Such a decision rather indicates that they tried to save as much as possible on the creation of the first prototypes using a ready-made power plant. The presence of flat nozzles on these machines, in case they are further developed, is a matter of time. For the US Navy, the X-47B unmanned aircraft was a prototype of sorts. The prospects for the combat use of such vehicles could significantly increase the strike and reconnaissance potential of the aircraft carrier group. With a maximum takeoff weight of 20 tons, an unmanned aircraft could have a range of 2,500 kilometers, depending on the task. For carrier-based fighters this figure is two to three times more modest. In this case, the mass of the payload in the form of precision weapons or reconnaissance equipment would be about two tons. Before starting the tests on the aircraft carrier, the X-47B was tested on the ground complex, it successfully climbed into the sky using a steam catapult and landed on an era finisher, where it caught on the cables with a released hook. The unmanned aircraft was controlled from a special command post where operators monitored telemetry and set a flight plan. The X-47B could carry out the mission in fully automatic mode and with the help of remote commands from the pilot. A special console was developed to move around the deck of the aircraft carrier. Being next to the unmanned aircraft, the operator could directly control the engine thrust, brakes, rotation of the nose pillar and the function of raising the wing consoles. Simultaneously with the ground tests, preparations for the sea were underway. For conducting preliminary tests on one of the Fi-18 fighters they installed a control system similar to that on the X-47B. In 2011, this aircraft made a series of successful landings on the deck of an aircraft carrier in fully automatic mode, while pilot was in the cockpit and monitored the system. Sea trials of the X-47B started in November 2012. The first stage consisted only in working out the movement on the flight deck of the aircraft carrier Gary Truman. The first takeoff of the X-47B from the aircraft carrier George W. Bush on May 14, 2013 marked the beginning of the second phase of testing. It lasted about two months and included the development of takeoff and landing operations, as well as command interaction between the control centers on the aircraft carrier and the land base. The originally envisaged test program was completed in full and found to be successful. Against this background, the command of the naval forces decided to extend the test and look at the intensive work of an unmanned aircraft along with carrier-based fighters. Exercises on the aircraft carrier Theodore Roosevelt, which lasted until the end of the summer of 2014, showed that the X-47B can, on a par with the Fi-18, be operated in the same time frame for takeoff and landing modes and taxiing on deck. The final stage of flight tests was in flight refueling. Initially this item was not in the mandatory program. The Navy allocated additional funding in 2014 when the test on aircraft carriers had already completed the X-47B became the world's first unmanned aircraft refueled in the air. In fact, this event happened on April 22, 2015. A KC-707 tanker aircraft belonging to the private company Omega Air Refueling was involved in the tests. Recruiting commercial organizations to provide such services to the military is common practice in the United States. Refueling took place fully automatically, the unmanned aircraft approached the tanker on its own and found the basket using an infrared camera. The joint flight lasted about 11 minutes, during which 1,800 kilograms of fuel was transferred to the X-47B. After undocking on command from the control room, the unmanned aircraft returned to base. Heavy drones are just making their way into life. No other country has yet adopted such vehicles in service and is unlikely to appear in the next five to eight years. All projects of flying wings have so far been in the status of technology demonstrators, where the main attention was paid to control and communication issues, combat functions were worked out to a minimum. For example, on an unmanned aircraft Asso Neyron, several dropping of models of corrected bombs were carried out. X-47B did not participate in such tests at all, they were not even planned. Moreover, the US Navy has so far decided to abandon the idea of creating a heavy attack on manned aircraft. Instead, they ordered the construction of several unmanned tankers.
Under the terms of the contract, Boeing will deliver seven MQ-25 aircraft over the next few years. In many ways, the imminent appearance of heavy unmanned flying wings restrains their potentially high cost. According to some estimates, the price of one production specimen will be at the level of a fifth-generation fighter. Such an opinion based on the cost of existing reconnaissance drones. RQ-4 Global Hawk was delivered at $140 million apiece. The potential high cost of heavy flying wings has already led to designs for cheaper and lighter jet attack drones. According to the proposed concept, they should become part of a whole swarm for independent combat missions or be led by fifth-generation fighters. This is the Channel Angels of the Sky, thank you very much for your attention and see you in new stories.